Do not make any noises with your mouth. Scratch yourself or fall over furniture. Yes, Aunt Daisy. Try to be a lady. Good afternoon. Would you tell Herr Sesemann that Fräulein Dieter Hartzl is here? And a relative of his. Herr Sesemann isn't home, madam. I'll wait. He's in Paris. When do you expect him back? Perhaps the governess has had some word from him. Will you come in? Be quiet, Heidi. Please don't make me stay here, Aunt Dirty. You will have every advantage here. A tutor, servants, pretty clothes, your own room. You should be grateful for this opportunity. I am. What an absolute and relative. How do you do? This child is Herr Sesemann's niece, the offspring of his deceased brother and my deceased sister. What's your name? Heidi. Since the death of her parents, Heidi has been my responsibility. Now, other arrangements will have to be made. Other arrangements? I cannot longer take care of Heidi. The time has come for her uncle to take her in. I do wish Herr Sesemann were here. I'm not in a position to say yes or no. And he may not be back for several months. Can he get in touch with you? Several months will be too late. You leave me no other choice than to take her to Dorfli and to leave her with her grandfather. I'm sorry. Will you leave your address? Uh, I'll tell Herr Sesemann as soon as he returns. Fräulein! Fräulein Rosemar, I need you! Oh, forgive me. Come along, Heidi. found a husband. Why not hold the wedding here in Dorfli? Thank you, Father. But my gentleman has made other arrangements. What's he like, this gentleman? A good man. A man of strong convictions. He wants to have a family, but he's not prepared to accept a child which is not his own. That makes a problem for Heidi, doesn't it? I have no choice but to leave her with my father. Dede, as the years have gone by, your father has become a complete recluse. He lives alone up on the mountain they call the Alm. He sees no one, needs no one. Nevertheless, it is time he did his duty. He and I were never close. I don't want to see him. It was my hope that you might take her to him. So be it. Don't think harshly of me, Heidi.
Good day, Jonas. Jonas, this is Heidi. Data can no longer care for her. Go on back down the mountain, Father. Take the child with you. Heidi. Are you a brave girl? No, sir. <laughs> Sit down. Still, I'm going to ask you to do a brave thing. Yes, sir. I'm going to leave. But I want you to remain behind. Right here. Will you do that? Just remember what I told you. He's a stubborn old ox. But he'll not let you sit out here in the cold all night. What shall I do when he comes out? Just be yourself. You'll be all right. Especially children. I know. At night he changes into a great big black eagle and swoops down across people's houses, screeching like a werewolf. It's almost night now. Well, I guess you can't stay here. Come on. Peter. A girl. I found her up on the arm at Old Hartzell's hut. What were you doing there, child? He's my grandfather. Oh. Come here. Heidi, isn't that your name? Yes, madam. You look like your mother. My fingers remember. Your mother was an angel, so sweet, so thoughtful. She never went to the city that she didn't bring me back two soft white rolls because she knew I loved them. So different from Dayton. How is that one? She's going to get married. Dayton, Mary, who would want that onion? Her Holstein wants her, but he doesn't want me. So she gave you to your grandfather. He doesn't want me either. All he wants is to be left alone. But why? Because he's an old fool. Something hurt him years ago, and ever since, he's been sitting up on the island, nursing his hurt like a sick goat. He doesn't talk to anybody, except maybe Father Richter. You see, child, your grandfather was once one of the greatest organ builders in all of Switzerland. Took him years to build the organ in Dorf. Music was everything to him. But Come. then, one... 
Jonas, remember, she's only a child. <laughs> Mother's dead, and she'll be too before long. Why? Oh, she's sickly and won't eat. Peter, may I have her? It's all right with me, but don't expect her to live. Can I carry her? All right. Sometimes at night, the wind whistles through these pipes and makes a ghostly music. The villagers always say, Grandfather has died on the elm, and his spirit has come back to the organ. Are you ghost or flesh? You shouldn't have left the child. I can't keep her. If you want, who will? Well, she seems strong enough. Surely some family could be found who could put her into service. Is that a fitting destiny for the daughter of Adelheid? Adelheid is dead. Then the granddaughter of Jonas Hartzell. Dead also. Jonas, give yourself to life again. There are rich years left. Share them with Heidi. I thought I made it plain when my daughter died that I could not raise the child. But there is no one but you. Even Data has deserted her. 
Are you going to find a place for her in the family, or shall I start making inquiries? Why are you so stubborn? It's my nature. Very well. I will see what I can do. In the meantime, however, I trust that you will see that she has a place to sleep and enough to eat. I'll send up some clothes for her. May God be with you. Peter? Yes? How did you get to be a goat herd? My father was one, and his father, and his father's father. Is that what you will always be? I hope so. And you? All I want is a place. A place at a table, where when everybody sits down to eat, they point to it and say, Heidi's place. Something all my own that no one can ever take away. Your cuckoo. Everybody's got that. I never have. With Aunt Dieter, we were always moving. It must have been fun. We moved because we couldn't pay the bills. It was awful. I never got to finish a grade at school. Still can't read. I can't read all right. That's nothing to be proud of. When I grow up, I don't expect I'll marry you. Why not? Because you're silly. Maybe when I grow up, I won't be silly. Poor thing. She's hungry. So am I. Let's eat. I didn't bring any food. The goats did. Tinker, go. Your turn. Isn't there any other way? If you're going to be silly, you should have brought a car. All right. Mother, she'd kick her away. What's coming here? Enough? Yes, thank you. Where did you get that? Peter gave it to me. Well, you can't keep it in the house. Just tonight, Grandfather. She's so little and has no mother. No. Then we'll sleep outside with the goats.
Is it all right with you if I go down to visit Father Richter? I have no objection. Wouldn't you like to come with me? It's a long way to draw me. You'd better hurry. It looks as if the alma agrees with you. Your cheeks are filled with alpine roses. I just hope I can stay here always, Father. Is that the organ my grandfather built? Yes. Once people came hundreds of miles to hear that organ played. Don't they come anymore? No music has been heard in this church since long before you were born. Why not? This was your grandfather's masterpiece. He built it for Dorfli with such passion, such perfection, such love that part of his soul escaped into it. Can you understand that, Heidi? He played it and beautifully. But the one who really filled this church with glorious music was your mother. She played like an angel. That must have made Grandfather very happy. Barry. And then one day she met and fell in love with a young man from Frankfurt, your dear father. On the day she went away, your grandfather tried to destroy the organ, but some people of the town stopped him. Poor grandfather. That day he left Dorfli. He went up on the Alm. He wouldn't see or speak to anyone. He's still that way. He won't say anything unless I ask him something. Heidi, the important thing is to keep asking. What else should I feed her, Grandfather? There's some young sweet clover by the upland path. She might like that. What do you do up there all day, Grandfather? I meditate. Sometime can I come up and meditate too? Meditation's best done alone. When I am wishing for dreams to come true Save my big wish for one day When I'll find a place of my own If I can only have one wish come true If only one dream can find me I'll dream of some place where love of my own Where did you hear that? I guess I've always known it. It was your mother's song. Can I come with you, Grandfather? Is this where you 
meditate, Grandfather. This is one of my places. There's an eagle lives off there on a rocky ledge. Each day he appears, opens his wings to the wind and soars round these peaks like some wondrous ship on a, an ocean of air. I sit here, earthbound. Still, he and I are companions. My thoughts go out to him and his come back to me. What kind of thoughts, Grandfather? The eagle seems to think that God did a better job of making mountains than he did of making mankind. And yet, imperfect as man is, he can come here and stretch his soul and glimpse, if only for a moment, some of the magnificence of his creator. Peter says there's magic on the arm. There are a lot of people who have that superstition. They believe that there's something old, something mysterious here. A power of some kind that can work miracles. Do you believe in miracles, Grandfather? Me? I believe in the ego. Father, hmm. what does this say? Oh, well, those are easy words. You tell me. I can't read. Nonsense. I can't. Surely they taught you at school. They tried to, but they said I was too much of a dreamer. Don't you even know the alphabet? The letters? The letters, yeah. A, B, C, D, F, G, H, I, J, K. Oh, no, 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 no. It took man thousands of years to evolve an alphabet. Each letter is a, a separate and unique individual. Now, recite again, and, and slowly, please. A, B, C, D, E, F, Good. G, H. Oh, if I'm interrupting. Do you realize that this child has never been taught to read? No. Go on with it, hi, dear. Mm -hmm. I... J, K, mm -hmm. L... No, 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 L, 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 L. Speak more sharply, more clearly. L, 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 L. Oh, oh, excuse me, Father, is your visit of some urgency? L. In a way, L. I found a home for Heidi. L. A family in Zurich. Heidi already has a home. She's staying here. Oh, pick it up again, Heidi, go on. <laughs> Welcome home, sir. Good evening. Thank you, Sebastian. Uh, and how is my daughter? Anxious to see you. Is she awake? Oh, is that you? She's awake. Uh, where's my little girl? Here. Papa! Oh, I missed you so much. I missed you too. Did you think of me? Think of you? No, not once. Not for an instant? Not for an instant. Well, maybe once. <laughs> Tell me where you were and what you were doing and what you thought. I was in Amsterdam, I was in Copenhagen, I was in London. No, no. Where were you when you thought of me? Oh, that was in Paris, on the Rue Royale, just around the corner of my hotel. You want to know everything? Yes. All right. It was that time of afternoon where everything goes quite grey. And people are rushing home for their dinner. Suddenly I turned around, and in the window of a little toy shop, I saw a funny little man who was trying to tell me something. What did he say? Well, he said, uh, Good evening, Papa. Please take me to Clara, and I'll make her laugh. 
What a silly face. No, 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 not a silly face. I'm not silly. Je suis très intelligent. He speaks French, you know. Yes. You see? Give him to me, Papa. You like him? Yes. What have you done with yourself while I was away? Nothing. Nothing? Hasn't Fran Rosenmeier taken you for walks? In that wheelchair, I hate it. And you didn't go for your carriage rides either? Hate people looking at me all the time. You shouldn't hate. Clara. All right? Yes. Come in. Sit down, please. Thank you. I'm rather concerned that Clara has been allowed to sulk in her room. Didn't I leave specific instructions that she has to be taken for daily walks? Oh, yes, you did, sir, but Clara finds it painful to be stared at. Well, how does she spend her time, then? Oh, she reads a great deal. And did she see her friends? Frau Gruber came to visit with her daughter one day, but Clara was not well behaved. She only spoke French to the little girl, and during lunch she squirted grape seeds at her. She did. Well, I don't blame her. I never cared for the Groovers myself. Anyway, tomorrow I'd like Clara to spend at least one hour in the fresh air, and I'll be on hand to see that she raises no objection. Sir, during your absence, a woman by the name of Hartzell was here. She wanted to leave a little girl called Heidi. Heidi? Well, the woman said she could no longer take care of her and that she was going to leave her with her grandfather, near Dorfley, I believe. I know the place. All right. I look into the matter. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. How did you find Paris? Well, how does one find Paris? Cold and damp, as usual. That's not the Paris I know. Well, it's the Paris I know. I heard of a bone specialist in Paris. Niedermeyer. He's Belgian. A good man, Niedermeyer. But Clara's trouble is not with the bone. Of course, there's still some pain from the injury, but she can walk. And she must walk soon, for if her mind becomes convinced that she can't, then she very likely will be a cripple for the rest of her day. Look, Bernd, we know each other quite well enough. You can tell me the truth. Do you think there's a chance she'll ever walk again? It's entirely up to her and to you. But you must make her try. You know, Richard, you spoil Clara, you and that lovely governess both. Clara's not a child anymore. Waiter. Thank you. What effect do you think another child in the house might have on Clara? Why do you ask? My brother's daughter is in need of a home. You have a big house. Why not? It would be good for Clara. Well, I think I'm going tomorrow to the Alm, and I'll bring her down. The Alm? A mountain above Durfley. Durfley? A village near Meinfeld. Meinfeld. Well, never mind. I'll find it. I take it that the purpose of your visit concerns the child. Am I correct? Yes. I wish to make a home for Heidi in Frankfurt. No. Well, I thought it was my understanding that Heidi was a burden for you. Heidi? It's not a burden? Even so, I think it's best for the child if she came with me. Do you? I do not. And I'm sure that my brother, if he were alive, would think the same. You need not remind me who Heidi's father was. 
took my daughter from me. And I can promise you I will not allow Heidi to suffer the same fate. Don't you think you're a little bit selfish? Selfish? She likes it here. Of course she likes it here. Any child would like it here. But you and I must decide what's best for her. I know what's best. Here, Heidi has something real, something that she can hold on to. Yes. On the other side, you're depriving her of every possible advantage. Best schooling, food, clothing, and a governess to see that she grows into a proper young lady. I very much doubt whether that is one of Heidi's ambitions. But please think a few years ahead of it. What do you think would become of her if she would be raised under these circumstances? Give her some chance. I can't give her into the hands of strangers. We are not strangers. We are relatives too, who love and provide for her. And I must admit, I have a selfish reason too. I have a daughter, about the same age as Heidi. She cannot walk, and I think she needs her. I only want to do what's best with the child. Well, isn't that what we both want? I must make one condition. Yes? If Heidi isn't happy or wants to come back here on the arm, she must be given permission to do so. Agreed. You have my promise. This is Heidi, and this is your new governess. Well, we've already met. Welcome, Heidi. Thank you. Don't you think she's pretty? Hmm? All right. Why don't you go upstairs and say hello to your cousin Clara? Hmm? And say hello from me, too. The second door on the right. There are five countries bordering on ancient Mesopotamia. What? 
What did the Empress Marie Antoinette say to the revolutionaries when they came with her bread? I don't know. Name five European monarchs who were beheaded. What's a monarch? They told me you were ignorant and countrified and they were right. Are you cousin Clara? Come here. Let me see you. Why are you dressed so funny? I'm not dressed funny. This is my best dress. You smell funny too. What's that funny smell? I do not smell funny. You smell like cheese. You smell like medicine. Get out of my room. I don't want you here. I don't want to be here either. I was just trying to be nice because they told me you were crippled and... Get out of my room. Get out. Get out. Roll out the pole. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. The pole. Bowdy, help me. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Get out. Get Heidi, out. tell Sebastian to fetch the doctor. to be in bed, young lady. I waited to see how Clara is. Oh, she'd be fine in the morning. Was she always lame? No. Until a year ago, Clara walked as well as you do. And then one day, on a family outing on a lake, a small boat turned over. Clara and her mother were drowning. Your uncle was able to save only one of them. And since that day, Clara hasn't walked. Maybe she hurt herself. There was some injury, and there still is some pain. No, I'm sorry that I yelled at her. I am not. I'm glad you did. When I went into her room just now, Clara was still fighting mad. She was threshing about with her arms and her legs. So you see, her legs are not as useless as she tells herself they are. Heidi, you should be in bed. I was just leaving. Good night, Juan and Oldenmeyer. Good night, Doctor. <coughs> so, my darling, be happy. Huh? Come on. When I was a little girl, they told me to be happy. It isn't easy, is it? It's just that I miss my grandfather and my place on the elm. It's not, but ladies always do. In the dark foliage, the gold oranges glow, the soft wind hovers, and the myrtle is still. Well done, Clara. Now get on with your needlepoint while I listen to Heidi's reading. Once upon a time, a long time ago, there lived in a small alpine village a girl named Elwyn. Every day she would climb to the high meadows and play with the goats who came there to eat the sweet clover. One day in the high meadow, she found a great golden eagle. with Heidi. Poor Heidi. I'm afraid she's terribly homesick. Oh, 
been looking for something up there, mademoiselle. Yes, I want to see the mountains. How do you open the window, Sebastian? This way. To see mountains? I suspect you would have to climb all the way to the top of St. Michael's. Thank you, Sebastian. you a penny. I haven't got a penny. Somebody in there must. They're rich, aren't they? Someone will give me a penny when we get back. All right, to St. Michael's. It's a monkey. No, it's not a monkey. It's kittens. See? Oh. Oh. Wait a minute. I get it. Catch it. Catch it. Catch it. Catch it. I got it. He's on the Oh, 
Monkey. Here is your penny. And now, leave. until you came. Tell. I promise. Close your eyes. Tight. Fraulein Rotemeyer is in love. Fraulein Rotemeyer? With my father. How do you know? Oh, by the way she looks at him and flutters about whenever he's near. Why don't they get married? That would be a terrible scandal. Why? A governess marrying the man she works for. Heidi, don't you know anything? What's wrong with the governess marrying the man she works for? Well, it just isn't done, that's all. Anyway, you haven't told me your secret. Oh, Clara, please don't make me tell. But I told you mine. What is it? It's a baby goat. I raised him for Peter. He gave me this one before I left. But how did you get her here? In my clothes chest. Oh, oh I come on. Say hello to Clara. Hello. Come on, you shy little thing. No. You shy little... Oh, oh sh Come on. Hello. You sweet little thing. Say hello to Clara. Now look, there she is. Dear Heidi, and you are a dear Clara, and I love you both. And what is this? A present, and it's for you. Oh, let's open it. Yes. Oh, it's too beautiful to open. What's going on here again? It's for our to my birthday, Papa. Oh, how nice. Happy birthday. Thank you. Aren't you going to be with us? No, I'm sorry. I'm invited for dinner. Where, Papa? At Dr. Rebus. Not another one of Dr. Rebu's dinners. Yes, another one of Dr. Rebu's dinner. Oh, Papa, please stay home. I would please. love to, but I'm sorry I can't. I'm already late. Happy birthday again, Brian Rothenmeyer. Thank you. And I'll see you tomorrow. But aren't 
you going to open your present? Yes, of course. Oh, how lovely. You must have sent all the way to Paris for this. No, we didn't. We sent a note to the dressmaker and sent it there by Sebastian. I just hope it fits. We had to guess the size. Oh, I'm sure it'll be perfect. I really am quite overwhelmed. <laughs> Happy birthday, Fräulein. Thank you, Sebastian. On his way out, Herr Sesemann stopped and asked me to serve you this. <laughs> With his best wishes. <laughs> to you, Sebastian. <laughs> to you, Heidi. To you, Clara. And to Herr Sesemann. <laughs> Heidi? Yes? Is there something you want to tell me? No. No, well then what's troubling you? Come on now. Nothing. It's a miserable feeling to be homesick, isn't it? Oh, for all I know, in my... I tried not to show it. Everyone's been so good to me here. But all I can think of is grandfather and Peter. And his grandmother, and my place on the arm. I just can't help it. I miss them so much. Oh, you'll see them again one day. But I want to be with them. Well, you can't always have everything you want in this world, Heidi. But Uncle Richard promised. He said if I was unhappy here, he'd let me go back to the arm. All right, then I'll talk to your uncle. You know, he's a very busy man, and sometimes he just doesn't notice things. Forgive me, I... I was waiting to speak with you and I must have dozed off. No, 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 stay. Stay where you are. I... Oh, I... brought you something for your birthday. I found this on the table of Dr. Rebu. Actually, I stole it. Oh, how very kind. I must also thank you for the champagne. It made dinner quite festive. You look quite different tonight. Oh, it must be the dress, a gift from Heidi and Clara. Oh, yeah, but it's most becoming. Oh, very extravagant of them. Yes. I wonder where they got the money from. <laughs> I'll find that out tomorrow. There goes your birthday. Did you make a wish? Yes. All right, say it. Fast, fast. Uh, I would like to have danced. Danced? Oh. <laughs> I'm a 
afraid I'm a very bad dancer. But if you wish, you insist. All right, let's try it. Without music, I told you I'm, I'm, I'm a very bad dancer. It's really silly. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Where's everybody? Well, I know she doesn't care for breakfast. And Heidi, well, she's homesick again. Shall I serve your breakfast, sir? No, I think I, I'd better see how Heidi is. I'll be back in a moment. What's the matter with you? Hmm? Please, Uncle Richard. I want to go home. You promised. Yes, I did. Please, just for a little while. A week, perhaps? Two weeks, please. Two weeks? All right. Two weeks. Oh, thank you, Uncle Richard. I called you because Heidi is leaving for Dörfli to visit her grandfather, and I'd like you to accompany her. Yes, sir. And uh, about last night, how did you sleep? Not very well. Well, me neither. I owe an apology to you. You see, it's only a year ago that my wife died. Please, I do understand. Thank you. Though I feel it's better for all concerned if I look for another position. No, please. I think it's best. I'll pack Heidi's things. Frau Rothmeier, could you stay until we find a new governess? Of course, sir. Frau... I'm leaving now. Clara, please say goodbye. No. I wish you were going too. I'll miss you. Oh, no, you won't. You'll have that go to what's his name to play with, and fields of flowers to run in, and a grandmother to visit, and a grandfather to tell you stories. 
You won't even think of me. Baby? Coming. Clara? What? I let you keep the baby goat. I don't want your smelly old goat. I'm leaving her anyway. Sebastian's fixed a place up in the garden for her. Heidi, come along. We'll miss you. Goodbye, Uncle Richard. Bye-bye, Heidi. Goodbye, Frau Rotenbein. Quite simple. You go straight up. All right, Heidi, go ahead. Thank you. Didn't they treat you well? They couldn't have been nicer, Grandmother. But all I could think of was home. How's my grandfather? Peter says he's very lonely. I must go to him. But first I have a present for you. Oh, rolls of white bread. Just like your mother used to bring me. I saved one from each meal. There are dozens in the basket. What a thoughtful child you are, Heidi. I know you want to see your grandfather, but come back soon. I promise, Grandmother. Are we nearly there yet? Not yet. Follow me. City? They were very nice to me, Grandfather, but I wanted to be here. Well, you mean you, you ran away? No, Fraulein Rosenmeier brought me. But why? Because I asked Uncle Richard to let me. So you weren't happy in the city? Sometimes. Clara was cross at first, but then we became friends. Uh -huh. oh. Uncle Richard and Fraulein Rosenmeier were wonderful. I started having bad mm. dreams. I'd try to find you. Hmm. I'd get lost. I'd wake up crying. Heidi! Here! This is my grandfather. I'm so glad to meet you. Not a day passes but what Heidi speaks of you. Thank you for bringing her home. We will miss her, but after the holiday, I'm sure that... A holiday. Oh, didn't Heidi explain? This is only a holiday. Herr Sesemann felt that for two weeks. I'm 
sorry, sir. I have some things to do. He wants me to stay. And you, Heidi? What do you want? Me. I noticed the shoes. Aren't they beautiful? And look at the dress. I've got eight. Three of them have lace on them. They didn't just educate you. They ruined you. Can I go with you to the high pasture? Come on. Nothing's the matter, Grandmother. I'm just happy. So. Please, Papa, I like it dark. Nonsense. Not on such a beautiful day. So beautiful outside. Come, you must tie this tie for me. You're the only one in the world who can do it properly. Oh. And I have a very important business lunch today, and I should look neat and correct. You know, I might buy you a little bird, a canary or something, hmm? You can talk to. Are you going for a ride this morning? No fun without Heidi. Well, Heidi will be back soon. I leave on Wednesday to get her. Can you manage? Yes, I think so. Good. Perfect. 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 Wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. Why were you going to get Heidi, not Fräulein Rotemeyer? Because Fräulein Rotemeyer is afraid of the grandfather. <laughs> I know she's afraid that he won't let her go. But Heidi's got to come back. Yes, yes, she will. She will. Don't worry. I'll get her. <laughs> You're as bad as Heidi. Finding out my last hiding place. You're quite safe up here. I doubt if I could make this climb often enough to disturb your, your seclusion. You've taken a lot of trouble for a social visit, or do you intend to deliver a sermon? I just saw Heidi in the pasture below. I've never seen a child so happy. She's forgotten what day it is. 
By my calculation, the holiday is over tomorrow. Yes. You should never have let her go the first time, Jonas. It was a mistake. One that can still be corrected. Too much time has slipped by. I'm just an onlooker now. Let the world go its own way. I'm just a ragged old beggar on the fringe of life. Heidi needs you to be more than that. So you did come to deliver a sermon. You're a bothersome old man. Why don't you go back down there and tend your flock? I'm a stubborn old man. And I grieve when one of my flock wastes its God-given talent. What would you have me do? Move back to Dorfli. I suppose to be a man of God, you must first of all be a dreamer of dreams. Great visions often start as small dreams. Well, Heidi? Where's that smile of yours gone? Peter just reminded me. Tomorrow my holiday's over. for Clara. She can put it under her pillow and imagine she's here on the arm. The one for me. Hi. Oh, how are you, Uncle Richard? How's Clara? How's Fraulein Rotenmeyer? Everybody is fine and we all missed you very, very much. Good morning, sir. Sit down here, sir. Thank you. Thank you for all your kindness. I'm afraid you've had a long journey for nothing. I've decided that Heidi shall stay here with me. Permanently. Well, that does present a problem. I've already started proceedings making me Heidi's legal guardian. Then you must stop them. Well, couldn't we at least discuss Heidi's future? There's no need for further discussion. I've made up my mind. Her heart, so you're being very unreasonable. Perhaps. Down in the village of Dorfley, they know me as a wild, eccentric, irrational, irascible old savage. Perhaps I should advise you to leave here before I justify that reputation. Grandfather, please. I must go. Why? Because Clara needs me. Give me another reason. Heidi. If you only had to consider yourself and not Clara, where would you like to live? Oh, here on the elm, of course. Sometimes Clara gets very angry at me and pushes up with her legs. Maybe one day if she gets mad enough, she'll walk. Then let Clara come here. Oh, Grandfather, that would be wonderful. Mm -hmm. Could she, Uncle Richard, please? That's very, very kind of you, sir. Of course, of course you could. When, Grandfather? Oh, whenever she likes, or as long as she likes. When, Uncle Richard? Whenever arrangements can be made. When will that be? When I come back from Paris. When will that be? In two weeks. One week. All right. <laughs> One week. The Lord be with you.
reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost until he find it? And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep, which was lost. Time will pass quicker that way. I've already washed the dishes and scrubbed the floor and made the bed, and I've run out of things to do. Well, go and sit down near me. You'll wear yourself out that way. Why don't you play the organ anymore, Grandfather? Have you ever known an unreasonable fear? A fear of falling, of high places, a, a fear of the dark? Since I left the organ, my hands have learned such a fear. They're afraid that when they touch the keys of the music that was once there, will have gone. What makes them afraid, Grandfather? Oh, the things that destroy most of us. <laughs> Hatred, bitterness, waste, time, neglect. Stupidity. You haven't got any of those things, Grandfather. Until you came to me, Heidi, they were all I had. Hello! They're here! It is beautiful, isn't it? It's just the way her Heidi said it would be. I thought you'd never get here. I couldn't believe it when Papa said I could come. What do you think of the elm? It takes my breath away. Clara's been so excited she hasn't slept a wink. Neither have I. Oh, Fräulein Rotenmeier, you look just beautiful. Thank you, Heidi. So you. And what about me? You look beautiful too, Uncle Richard. I'm going to keep you here forever and ever. I hope you had a pleasant journey. Yes, thank you. We had. Welcome, Fräulein Rotenmeier. Herr Hartzell. Grandfather, this is Clara. Oh, Clara, I've made something for you. I want for you to try it. Uh, uh, have you ever ridden in a goat cart before? No, sir. Well, Peter, yes, will be your wagon master. Ah, let's see how you get along. Hmm? Yes, I'm looking. A prince has never had a finer carriage. Now I can go anywhere. Oh, thank you, Grandfather. You're welcome, child. Heidi, remember the sachet of alpine roses you sent me? Yes. Where did you pick them? Come on, I'll show you. <coughs> Don't worry, they'll be all right. And now, you, you must have some of my coffee. Oh, yes, your marvelous coffee. <laughs> I'd love to, but I'm afraid I miss my train. Oh, then, then I'll say goodbye, Herr Sesemann. Goodbye, Grandfather, <laughs> and thank you. And you, Fräulein Rodenmeier, have you also a train to catch? No, sir, I'd love some of your coffee. Thank ah. you. time to time to check on Clara. Yes, but not too often. This will be a good chance for both of us to grow away from each other. It is beautiful, isn't it? You still insist on leaving? 
I will not return to Frankfurt. I've accepted a position in England. I wish you would stay. Please, I cannot. I see. Well. No, sir, but the coffee will help. Have you found a place to stay at Dorfley? A little pension. Oh, yes, that used to be a good place. They tell me you're something of a legend. That was a long time ago. More recently, I've lived, shall we say, aside from life. How pleasant that must be, to simply brush the world aside. Take my advice. If you want something, you must reach out for it. Is it too late to try again? Yes. I think so. What's the name of that mountain? The tallest? It's called Falcon's Nest. Does the falcon really nest there? No, an eagle. He's a friend of Grandfather's. You're teasing. No, Grandfather says the eagle tells him things. Like what? Well, the eagle says that mountains make people better because it brings them closer to God. I wonder the mountains could make me a better person. Sometimes you're mean, but you're never really bad. I'm bad all the time. I heard Dr. Abu talking to Fraulein once. He said I could walk if I tried, but I won't try because I'm punishing Papa. He said that's the reason my Papa doesn't marry again. You wouldn't do a thing like that. He said that by not walking, I keep reminding Papa that in the accident he saved me and not my mother. I don't understand that. Neither do I. But the doctor said it was all because of the way I feel, because I'm alive. My mother is dead. Is that true, Clara? But all I know is when I try to walk, it hurts. Didn't she look wonderful? 
<laughs> Dearest Clara, are you sure this is you? I hope so. What have you been feeding us? Oh, milk, cheese, bread, vegetables in the garden. Well, I wrote to my I love the elm. Now we're going back to Frankfurt. Clara, there's been a change in your father's plans. He's coming today instead of next week. But I'm not ready to go home. Oh, you must discuss that with your father. Please, will you speak to him? Plead it in the letter stay. Also, I've been offered a position in England. But you can't take it. Well, I've already accepted. I leave in a few hours. Why? I must. Why must you? Oh, my reasons are terribly grown up and complicated. It's because you love my father, isn't it? It may be partly that. But it's also because I love you, too. I think another governess might be better for you. I've been much too indulgent with you, Clara, much too permissive. No! Someone stronger might have forced you to depend on yourself. Forced you, possibly, to walk. I've been much too soft with you. I'll be anywhere you like, but please stay. Will you say goodbye? Dearest Heidi, you will write me in England, won't you? I want you to stay too. It's curious. I've been barking on the same voyage from which you just put into shore. Perhaps it's a voyage you don't need to make. I want you to go with Heidi to the high meadow and wait for me. I've made this for you. What's it for? It's to walk with. I can't walk. You know that. You can. You must, Clara. For yourself and for all of us who love you. What is called magic up here on the arm is really strength. Draw on that strength, Clara. And walk. is alone. Oh. No, wait, Heidi. It's something else that I've learned from the eagle. You see, in all living beings, there is a, a courage, a strength, a, a daring that we do not know we have until suddenly, one day, we need them. And then, when we find out that we're no longer the cowards that we thought we were, our hearts and minds are open and eager for what you might call a, a miracle. For all of us, Grandfather? For all of us.